Support for this project is provided by Mohawk Finishing Products. From sandpaper to fill sticks, Mohawk has all your finishing needs. Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. I'm John Peters, and in this episode, we're going to build this small bedside table or end table. This is made of Douglas fir, and it's part of kind of a three-piece set or series. I've made a modern bench and a sofa table, and I've got free plans for those projects on my website, and I'll have links in the description. This was a fun project, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out, so let's go ahead and get started. I had one board left over from the sofa table project, and I'm starting this build by cutting that board in half and joining it back together. I'm joining the boards at the sapwood, and that should make the seam disappear once the boards are clamped together. I'm also being really careful where I place the biscuits, since this board is going to be cut into four parts to create a box, I don't want to expose the biscuits when cross-cutting the board. I'm joining the boards with biscuits and I'll use the Rockler Shorefoot clamps to clamp the boards together and make sure that I clean up all the glue squeeze out with a wet rag before it has a chance to set up. While the glue is setting up, I'll get to work on the legs. You can see they're going to have a slight taper and I'm making the legs out of common Douglas fir 2x4s from the home store and the first step is to cut the legs to a rough length. Next I'll rip the 2x4s or the legs at 2 and a quarter inches and I'll remove material on both sides to get rid of the roundover. I made a little design change here and ripped the legs to two and a half instead of two and a quarter. After ripping the legs to width, I sent them through the drum sander for one pass on each side. This is the Jet 1836. It's a small drum sander, but I think it's great for a small shop like mine. And for the most part, I use either 80 or 100 grit sandpaper. I've set up a stop block at the miter saw, and now I'll cut the legs to length. Next, I'll measure and mark for a lap joint that I'll cut on the table saw using a crosscut sled and a stop block. I made this quick tapering jig to taper the outside of the leg. At the top I'm at zero and it tapers down to about a quarter of an inch at the bottom. On the inside of the leg I want kind of a slight curve. So I'm going to measure over an inch and I'm going to clamp this thin piece of wood at the inch mark and then just kind of bend the wood where I want it. And once I get this one where I want it, once I get this leg good, I can use this leg as the pattern. I'll use 50 grit sandpaper and a sanding block to remove the blade marks. I'm shaping the insides of the leg with kind of a roundover. You can see I've already shaped this leg. And what I like to do is take a measurement. This is going to be a reference line. I'll measure in a half of an inch and draw a line. Flip the leg around again. Draw another line 
and then draw a line on the outside of the leg and one on the other side. And when I'm shaping the leg with the hand plane, I'll try not to go past this reference line. After using the hand plane, I'll use 80 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander to finish shaping the legs. Now that the glue is dried, I'll unclamp the top and rip it to width using the table saw, and then I'll send it through the drum sander for one or two passes on each side. I just ran the board through the sander, and before I did that, I transferred any marks from the face to the edge. These marks are here as a reminder, just to make sure I don't accidentally hit a biscuit. The way this board is going to be cross-cut is I'm going to have a 5-inch piece that will be a side, a 12-inch piece that will be a top or a bottom, another 5-inch piece, and then another 12-inch piece, and that way the grain should run around the box. I used the cross-cut sled on the table saw and cut the parts to a rough length. Then I'll use the fence on the table saw and cut the parts to their exact measurement. I'm building the box with hand cut dovetails and hand cut dovetails are turning out to be a lot more work than I remembered. The last time I built anything with hand cut dovetails was about two years ago so I'm also really not the best at it. To kind of get warmed up and refresh my memory, I looked at Jay Bates' video where he uses the David Barron jig to cut hand cut dovetails. So if you're going to build this project, check out Jay's video. I'll have a link to it in the description. If you don't want to build this project with hand cut dovetails, you could always dowel the box together or screw the box together. There's several different ways to go about it. You could even build a plywood box and then veneer the box. So don't let the hand cut dovetails throw you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just cut them. Hopefully it'll work out and I'll, I'll get a, a nice dovetail joint. I'm using a marking gauge to mark the depth of the cut. And the depth of the cut is the thickness of the material. I've made this little jig here to help ensure that the dovetails line up around the same place on each board. All right, well, I'm really happy with the way these dovetails turned out. They're not perfect, but they're pretty close, and any gaps that I have, I can fill with sawdust and epoxy. It definitely took a long time, and if, I'm, if I build a project like this sometime in the future, I'm going to look into a bigger dovetail jig. I have a dovetail jig that you can use with a router, but it's not wide enough. That's why I went with the hand-cut dovetails but it definitely took a long time. So now I'm getting ready to glue the box together. And before I put any glue down, I'm gonna make sure I'm totally organized with glue blocks, my clamps, wet rags, anything I think I'm gonna need because once I start to put that glue down, I'm gonna to have to work really fast. I'm wrapping my glue blocks with plastic wrap so any potential glue squeeze out won't stick to them. What am I doing here? Oh, there we go.
While the glue is setting up on the box, I'll go back to the legs and add a small chamfer on the outside of the leg with a chamfer bit in the router. I decided to use wood glue and cherry sawdust for the wood fill because it was the best color match. After forcing the wood fill into the gaps, I used a wet rag to remove the majority of the fill. I made this quick jig to make it easy to drill a hole on all four sides of the box in the same exact place. I used the drill press to drill the hole in the jig and that will act as a guide so the holes are perfectly straight. I'm using a wet rag to make sure I clean up any glue squeeze out before it has a chance to set up. For the finish, I'm using Finisher's Choice Clear Lacquer by Mohawk Finishing Products. I'll use three coats, sanding lightly in between coats with 320 sandpaper. Okay, well definitely a fun little project and it's nice to have kind of a, a series or a, a set of furniture, all this Douglas fir. I can see these pieces, the sofa table and the modern bench and this piece all working in maybe a cabin or a very minimal kind of a bedroom. Kind of like, I think of it almost as like a, a writing room or something, I don't know. But uh, anyway, a uh, couple of takeaways from this project is cutting dovetails in soft wood like uh, Douglas fir is it's definitely more difficult than cutting dovetails in something like a cherry or a walnut because the wood is very fibrous and has a tendency to want to kind of break away or tear away on you. So that's something to keep in mind and I think that this piece would look good in walnut or cherry. You could also make this piece bigger, you can make it wider, you could alter this design really in any way you like. I will have free plans for this project on my site along with the plans for the uh, the bench and the sofa table. So I wanted to also give a big shout out and thank you to Mohawk Finishing Products. I've been using Mohawk Finishing Products since 1986 when I first started working with Bob Waltzak at The Woodworker in Wayne, New Jersey and I've been using Mohawk Finishing Products ever since then. So definitely check them out. They've got all kinds of things available. Everything from fill sticks to uh, magnetic catches, you name it there's going to be something there that you could use. So either check them out or maybe even call them and order a catalog. That's what I do. So as always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.